A secret radioactive explosion in Russia is suspected to just be viral marketing for season four of Stranger Things. Trump has threatened to label Antifa a domestic terrorist group. But how will they fit all those World War II vets in Guantanamo? And Prince Andrew denies involvement in the Jeffrey Epstein scandal because, like all royals, he only has sex with his relatives. All this and more on The Beaverton. <laughs> Emma, how was your weekend? Miguel, none of your goddamn business. Okay. And now, tonight's top stories. With the federal election just two months away, things are kicking into gear with the kind of high-octane drama only Canadian politics can provide. A 63-page ethics report. <laughs> ethics Commissioner Mario Dion concluded that Trudeau's interference in the SNC-Lavalin case violated the Conflict of Interest Act. Dion also insisted that Trudeau return his world's best boss coffee mug. <laughs> Trudeau is breaking barriers as the first prime minister to violate the new Conflict of Interest Act. He's also now repeatedly disregarded the rules, making him the Neil and Lance Armstrong of ethics law. <laughs> Trudeau's behavior might be forgivable if he ever actually asked for forgiveness, but he still refuses to admit wrongdoing. I can't apologize for standing up for Canadian jobs. Come on, man. You love apologizing. Well, in fairness, Trudeau is right to be worried about SNC-Lavalin. They are one of the few non-pornography-based companies left in Quebec. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. The Liberals are apparently now planning to minimize the PM by running without using his name or image, which means all three parties are running with an empty space for their leader. <laughs> Of course, conservatives are even more in bed with big business than the liberals. Choosing to vote sheer over Trudeau because of SNC is like finding a spider in your bathtub and saying, that's it, I'm moving into the spider factory. <laughs> Trudeau is clearly hoping Canadians won't remember the details of his violations when they vote in October. Honestly, that might not be a bad strategy because we started talking about this three minutes ago and we've already kind of forgotten. Right. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Now for the exciting story that's captured the world's attention, the economy. Uh. Oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Forecasters say we could be headed for a recession. The reason? It's something called the inverted yield curve, which is a thing you will never understand that has the power to completely destroy you. <laughs> like a rare bacteria or a Cthulhu. That's because the inverted yield curve has predicted every U.S. recession for the past 50 years. It's like a groundhog predicting spring, if the groundhog were a reliable economic concept, and not just a glorified sewer rat that thinks it's better than me. But for this possible recession, there could be a much simpler reason. The simplest reason of all? Yes. <laughs> No longer satisfied with bankrupting his own business, Trump's planning to bankrupt every business. How? His ill-considered trade war with China. When you elect a businessman as president, you can't expect him to understand how the economy works. But please don't be too hard on him. His best friend just died. <laughs> Trump's taking a lot of heat for letting things get to this point. In fairness, he isn't rich because he made money. He's rich because he has money, which just proves the old economic saying, have money, dumbass. Yeah, totally. yeah. There's no better investment than generational wealth. One thing's for sure, if a recession does hit, it would be terrible for Canada's middle class. So thank God we don't have one of those anymore. <laughs> It's a known for sure true fact that Canadian media has a left-wing bias. For example, most television news outlets are owned by Bell, Rogers and Chorus. And nothing says Marxism like a handful of billion-dollar telecom giants. And there's another itty-bitty exception to the rule, Post Media, a politically conservative conglomerate with a scary amount of U.S. ownership. Last week, Canada Land reported that Post Media gave a directive to its newsrooms to introduce an even further right-wing slant to their papers. 
You might ask, why didn't my local newspaper also report on this? Well, it's because Post Media owns them. They have over 140 brands, including the National Post, Assorted The Suns, and one very Islamophobic doggy daycare. <laughs> The fact that they want to go further right is remarkable, considering they already employ Rex Murphy, who is so pro-oil that climate change is happening to his face. <laughs> Poor guy. Which brings us to tonight's point-counterpoint. Should the Beaverton follow in Post Media's footsteps and become a far-right news source? Emma, how far-right are we talking here? Iraq war right or Iran war right? Oh, 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 further. We're talking war with Ireland right. Oh. <laughs> they had a good run. But Post Media put a prominent conservative and climate skeptic in charge of their political coverage. If a fake news source like us isn't there to counteract them, the country might be at risk of believing the actual fake news. You know, like Post Media. Uh Stop worrying. The U.S. has Rupert Murdoch, Sinclair Media, and Fox News barfing right-wing propaganda down their throats 24 hours a day. And the last time I checked, which was October 2016, they were fine. <laughs> fine. Chill. Sure, sure. Now that you mention it, according to everything I read in the Post, they still are. <laughs> Look, Miel, everyone's bosses interfere with their content. Our network tells us we can't use the word shit more than two times per episode. And I love to say that word. <laughs> We're saving one for later, okay? Okay, okay, but oh, yeah. it's more than that, right? Wouldn't shifting our stance to the far right mean pandering to racists and homophobes and also conceivably calling our spouse's mother? <laughs> Miguel, I already call my husband that. <laughs> okay? Sort of our thing. But at the end of the day, whether we're acting as a shill for big oil or writing advertorials for the Fraser Institute, right-wing media gets paid, and mama needs to buy nice things for mother. I don't like that. No, no. I don't know, Emma. I'm not sure I can sell my principles for money. Okay, if not for money, then how about the thinking man's money? Fear. Fear of what? Unemployment. How many jobs do you think there are in Canadian media, Miguel? As Margaret Wente and Christy Blatchford's decades of work have proven, hateful op-eds are the key to a journalist's job security. <laughs> well, I do need job security. Well, there you go. A hard shift to the right, or else. Now, tell people what to expect after the break on the new Beaverton. Oh, man, really? Just read it. Okay. After the break, are libtards cucking your free speech? <laughs> Meet the 55-year-old man who says a racial slur we can't repeat on air. That wasn't oh, so hard. Was Welcome back. The Hong Kong protests are now in their 11th week. This weekend, an estimated 1.7 million people held pro-democracy rallies. The situation continues to evolve as rapidly as a flurry of kicks and punches from beloved Hong Kong film star Jackie Chan. <laughs> the protesters are mostly young, and they want greater democratic freedom, access to affordable housing, and any sign that Beijing cares about their future. On the other side, the Chinese authority simply wants to keep stomping on everyone's face forever, so... Mm, 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 it's tough to say. Who's in the right? Protesters have remained energetic and organized, using laser pointers to disrupt facial recognition technology, pylons to contain tear gas, and shutting down Hong Kong's airport, causing hundreds of flights to be canceled. Amazing! You and I can't even organize an evening of drinks. And we don't have to deal with tear gas or rubber bullets. Just which Jack Astor's to go to. <laughs> I love their sauced-up chicken fingers. Hey, do you know they don't even freeze those things? They're fresh. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Delicious. Now, China's government is adamant. They'll only allow elections in Hong Kong if they can pre-screen the candidates, which is kind of like having your parents pick your date. They'll go with a lawyer, because that's what's best for you, when all you want is a three-way with some hot pro-democracy gymnasts. So how did it all get here? For that, we turn back to 1997. Titanic was sailing into our hearts at the box office, and Chumbawamba's tub-thumping made us all wonder if the very idea of music was worth it. <laughs> Also, the UK ceded control of Hong Kong to mainland China. As part of the deal, Beijing agreed that Hong Kong could keep its Western systems of finance and administration for 50 years. What happens when those 50 years are up? Nobody knows! <laughs> it's the most terrifying mystery since what was in that yogurt cup I bought at the gas station. 
And that anxiety is a big part of what's fueling the demonstrations. China's government has painted the protesters as terrorists, which is a bit misleading. I mean, keeping planes on the ground isn't usually part of the terrorist playbook. <laughs> Officials have also claimed the United States is orchestrating the protests from behind the scenes. So let's see what the alleged conductor in chief has to say about the situation. It's a very tricky situation. I think it'll work out, and I hope it works out for liberty. I hope it works out for everybody, including China. Okay, right? So if you need proof that the U.S. isn't behind the pro-democratic protests, look no further than the fact that he put a question mark after the word liberty. Trump wasn't the only leader of the pro-democracy West to speak out on the situation in Hong Kong with the white-hot intensity of a 10-watt bulb. We uh, certainly call on, on uh, China to uh, be uh, very careful and very respectful uh, in how it deals with people who have legitimate concerns. In fairness to Justin, maybe he's just afraid if he condemns China, they'll take their pandas back. <laughs> he clearly loves those little guys, and he could probably use a hug. What Trump and Trudeau are saying by saying nothing is that they're afraid of pissing China off and damaging trade relations, which brings us back to the situation in Hong Kong. The Chinese army could crush the protests in a couple of days. They have been ramping up military exercises in the area. These satellite photos show armored vehicles parked in a stadium near Hong Kong's border. Though, hopefully, they're just there to play a little tank soccer. <laughs> The reason Beijing hasn't sent in the army is the same reason Trudeau and Trump were so tepid, money. Hong Kong is a major center for global commerce, but you get the feeling their patience is almost up. No one is sure how this is going to end, and though the protests are a byproduct of Hong Kong's unique history, the sentiment behind them isn't. Young people feeling hopeless and underrepresented is a problem a couple other countries have as well. <laughs> And with democratic institutions under assault all over the world, Hong Kong could be the canary in the coal mine. In the meantime, we can only hope China considers the demands of the protesters and reforms itself into a more open society, one that respects the will of its people, a sort of people's republic, <laughs> if you like. Up next, Democrat Michael Bennett said his brother was unenthusiastic about his run for president, which is a wild way for me to find out that Michael Bennett is my brother. <laughs> Fans of RuPaul's Drag Race rejoice. The popular show about drag queens competing to be America's next drag superstar is coming to Canada this fall. And at the risk of editorializing, we are gag. Good. Yes, yes, queen. queen. Yes. <laughs> Here to talk about it is Beaverton writer and queer culture enthusiast Brandon Hackett. Oh, hey. What's up, Brandon? Aren't you excited for Drag Race Canada? Oh, I can't wait for it. But I can't help but think, what's for us anymore? Us? No, not you. Us, the queer community. As queer culture becomes more and more popular, what else do we have that's just ours? Madonna? <laughs> okay, please. Madonna stole from queer people. She appropriated voguing, she knows all the words to Evita, and sometimes she affects an English accent. Oi, Madge, that's our thing, isn't it? But no one is taking away queer culture. Sam Smith is as popular as ever. Mm, true. Sam Smith won't just go away forever, no matter how much I pray. <laughs> but as with most cultures that are appropriated, it does get watered down. Like queer slang, which was created by black femmes as a defiant queer vernacular, but is now the thing any soccer mom uses when she gets her latte. Serving <laughs> pumpkin spice realness, slay hunty! Okay, well, fine, that sucks, I, I get that, but there's a huge proliferation of queer movies now that everybody loves. That's great news for queer visibility. Oh, yeah? Name a queer movie, and don't say... Call, Call me, me by, by your name? name? Oh, <laughs> why not? Because that movie isn't queer. It's about two cisgender men who have a fling in Italy, and when it's time for them to bone, the camera gets so scared it zooms in on a tree. <laughs> if you ask me, it should have zoomed in on Timothée Chalamet going full eggplant on that peach. 
Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Now, Miguel and I get it, okay? But to play devil's advocate, wouldn't that be just a touch too much for general audiences to handle? Okay, that's exactly my point. Everybody loves queer culture when it's fun, but there's also a part of being queer that's not fun. Remember that drag and slang developed as reactions to repressive social orders. So if people truly want to love and respect queer culture, they should be able to accept every aspect of it, especially the uncomfortable. What are you proposing? You want to watch Drag Race? You also have to watch Angels in America. You want to listen to Queen? You got to gut it through Freddie Mercury's solo albums. <laughs> it's tough, but it's fair. Brandon Hackett, everybody. The Trump administration announced strict new immigration rules designed to keep poor foreigners from moving to America, just like Jesus said. <laughs> to promote the changes, Citizenship and Immigration Services Director Ken Cuccinelli put his own spin on the poem at the base of the Statue of Liberty, saying, Give me your tired and your poor, who can stand on their own two feet and who will not become a public charge. Sorry, it's just poetry always really steams my broccoli. <laughs> oh, wow. But it doesn't end there. Cuccinelli has a long list of updates to bring the Statue of Liberty in line with Trump's vision of America. The famously welcoming statue will now stare down hopeful immigrants by brandishing a stop sign and a tiki torch. <laughs> and instead of her hoity-toity robes and crown, she'll now wear an ice vest and a who-farted hat. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it was her. But the biggest change of all, instead of standing out in the ocean doing nothing all day, the Statue of Liberty will be getting herself a damn job, like the rest of us. From now on, she'll be laid on her side to make up 200 feet of Trump's border wall. Covered in dust and foiling desperate migrants, Lady Liberty has never looked more glamorous. <laughs> when we return, Benjamin Netanyahu claims that denying Ilhan Omar entrance into Israel has nothing to do with her being Muslim, since he also banned Bernie Sanders from a birthright teen tour. <laughs> Welcome back. A woman from BC known as Dr. Lipjob has been jailed for posing as a doctor and providing cosmetic injections at Botox parties. Think of them like clothing swaps, except instead of taking old clothes out of your closet, you're putting new toxins into your forehead. <laughs> and now I'd like to offer my hot take on the issue. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> And it's the subject of tonight's, let me explain. <laughs> Frankly, Miguel, this is the greatest injustice since Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. <laughs> Dr. Lipjob is a feminist folk hero, and we've got to get her out of jail. But she scammed tons of women, and she's not a doctor. Neither is Dr. Dre, but we let that slide because he's an artist. <laughs> and yes, faking your credentials so you can play fast and loose with botulism is, how shall we say, softly shady. <laughs> but her only crime, other than the crime she did, was trying to help women feel better about themselves. What? Let me explain. Women aren't allowed to age a day over 21. I can legally be fired from television if I do. <laughs> and I'm out here dropping serious bank on serums and creams and products like Dead Sea Snail, Living Beauty, Uvanescence. They smell like gasoline. They don't do shit! <laughs> so if some women would rather put their money towards a night with the gals, sipping rosé and getting stabbed with glow-up venom, I say that's way better than Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> sipping rosé? I don't think people can consider sent to medical procedures while they're drunk, except for tattoos. But why can't women just go to a clinic? Let me explain. No, me explain. <laughs> women are shamed for growing old and double shamed if we pay for a procedure to reverse it. When people thought Renee Zellweger had gotten work done, they treated her like she turned into some kind of swamp witch. It's a real pick your poison scenario where one of the choices is actual poison. Yeah, ageism sucks, but shouldn't we be trying to shift our way of thinking instead of chasing the fountain of youth? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we should all try to love ourselves more. But that'll take like 10 years of therapy and a full-scale reboot of society's attitudes towards women. And I'm busy. For now, Botox is more efficient and more affordable. You know what? That I can get behind. Well, you're not gonna get behind this. I think all men should get Botox. What? Why? Let me explain. We need men to get on the Botox train to help normalize the stuff. Then, bro science companies will market it as face poison, and your trainer can stab you in the temple on your way out of the gym. I guess that sounds kind of fun. This has been, let me explain, free Dr. Lip Job! <laughs> well, that's the end of our show. Next week, a fossilized penguin the size of a human being was discovered in New Zealand. But one big question remains. Will they let me ride it? See you next week!